Hey, Austin. Oh. Um, hey, theater critic. So, did you get everything with the Riddler sorted out? Yeah, I got everything taken care of. Did he take the watch? It's perfectly fine. What about the Miraculouses? Thankfully, he didn't. That's good. Hey, uh, did you finish up that Dark Blade review? Well, no. But that's mostly because I don't think I could properly review this episode. Didn't you promise that you were going to do a collaboration video for this episode review? Yes, I promised, but there are a few problems. One, I'm completely worn out from the last review, especially having to deal with the Riddler. Two... Oh. And three... This has got to be one of the most mediocre episodes I've ever seen. And it's the bad kind of mediocre where... It's hard for me to even talk about it or come up with any jokes. It gives me no reason to make fun of it or even discuss it. So, what are you saying? What I'm trying to say is... I'm gonna have to cancel our collaboration. What? I'm sorry, there really isn't much material for me to work with. Aww. I really wanted to make fun of you for crushing on Cat Noir. Oh God! This is gonna be a quick one! Kinda weird without my table next to me. Hello everybody, welcome back to my Miraculous Marathon. Guys, I really wanted to write a proper script for this review. I really did, but I just couldn't. And I'm sorry to disappoint you by saying that, but this has gotta be one of the most boring episodes of Miraculous Ladybug I've ever seen. I mean, I couldn't even make any sort of joke about it, or even apply any sort of commentary on it. I mean, sure, in the beginning it does offer some material, like... It's better to fail trying than not having tried at all. Try telling that to Yoda. Do. Or do not. There is no try. But those kinds of moments are few and far in between. I mean, there's only so much I could explain the plot without coming up with a joke before I end up feeling uncreative, or lazy. But since this is a review, I might as well explain the plot in a brief synopsis. So, Marinette is going up against Chloe as Miss Bustier's class representative. Now, I'll admit that this particular plot thread is probably the best thing about this episode for a reason that I'll get into later. Meanwhile, Adrian's fencing trainer, Armand Darjancourt, voiced by Joey Freya, is pretty bitter about losing the election against Andre Bourgeois for mayor, and this allows Hawk Moth to akumatize him into Dark Blade, named after one of his ancestors who ruled Paris with an iron fist, but was overthrown by a wealthy Frenchman. I see what they did there. Dark Blade isn't really a terrible villain per se. I mean, his design is all right, and his powers are pretty nifty. He is able to knight anyone into one of his soldiers, and he's able to knight cars and turn them into catapult. Okay, how does that even work? Uh, because it's magic? One of these days, Ladybug. One of these days. The only problem with Dark Blade is that there really isn't anything special about him. He doesn't really try to do anything to stick out amongst the rest of these villains. In fact, that's kind of the problem that I have with this episode. It really doesn't do much to stand out. It's just there. I could complain about Marinette making her diary box into a trap. It's a trap! I could talk about how this is honestly one of the best scenes in this entire episode. And I could even mention this scene. The doors! Quickly! The doors! Quickly! Quick, Chloe! Quick, Chloe! Oh, <laughs> you magnificent did I read your book! But in order to do that, I'd have to sit through 22 minutes of mediocrity. Not even the action scenes, especially the sword fights, are anything special. First off, they're pretty short, and secondly, they're just not that fun. 
And that's kind of what's disappointing about them, because I loved the action scene in Copycat and I would have expected, seeing as they're fencers, to see more sword fighting with these two, but we don't get any of that. And the one scene with Cat Noir taking care of Darkblade soldiers just feels awkward with all the shots and cuts. I don't know, it just feels off to me. But even with all of that, probably the best thing about this particular episode, and I can't believe I'm saying this, this is probably the best that Marinette has ever been. Now typically I would lambast Marinette for doing things like that diary box trap, but I genuinely feel like this is probably Marinette's best episode that she's been in. Seriously, it's impressive to see that this girl of all things is able to protect an entire class when she isn't ladybubbing around. And her speech at the end does make her into a much stronger character than we come to expect from her. But even with the positives, I could only call Darkblade alright. And sadly, that's not going to cut it for me. I expected better from an episode like this. Well, then again, I didn't know what to expect. I mean, it's not on the same level as Roger Cop or Lady Wi-Fi, but it's still a huge disappointment. I would only recommend this episode to those who haven't seen it, but I really don't see any reason to go back to this episode. And I'm really sorry to those who wanted to see a proper review of this episode. I really wanted to, but it just gave me no reason to do so. Thankfully, that's not going to be the case for the next episode. Yeah, I already have the script written for it. And I promised you guys that I won't chicken out like I did here. It will be a proper episode review, and there will be a few surprises thrown in. I promise. So next time on the Miraculous Marathon, we're going to be having a look at the mime. Until then, this is ASLB, and I've got nothing else to say other than, have a great life, stay miraculous. Was that a chainsaw? I got transformed into a knight. So did I. What a nightmare. Liar!